I had the absolute pleasure of borrowing this amazing clay sculpture of Gul'dan, meticulously sculpted by an incredibly talented artist and my dear friend Lars Stranden. I absolutely recommend checking out his channel if you're into more hands-on artistry. The moment he showed me this thing, I just knew I had to scan it. But this time around, I changed it up. It's no secret at this point that every subject I've ever scanned have been done with a big boy, full frame DSLR or mirrorless camera, but I want to show you that you don't need expensive camera gear to get great results. So I'm using my three-year-old iPhone 12 and the free reality scan app made by Capturing Reality, who are kindly sponsoring this video. Reality Scan is available on both iOS and Android and provides you with everything you need to get some pretty sweet scans. So without further ado, let's get to scanning this bad boy. Taking a look at the sculpture here, it's important to remember the basics of photogrammetry. Smooth or shiny surfaces like metal, glass, or in this case, clay, things that lack any kind of feature point or surface detail can pose real challenges for getting quality scans. Your scans will turn out very lumpy, but that is where scanning spray comes in very handy. It adds surface details, helping you get a much, much cleaner result. On top of that, it fades away over time, leaving no residue behind. So after carefully applying the spray to the sculpture, I can get started with the scanning. Reality Scan is remarkably easy to use with a clean and intuitive UI. Press the shutter button in the middle and start moving around your subject. By default, it will automatically take photos as you move around, but you can take additional photos by tapping the volume up or down buttons. Reality Scan's best feature is live guidance, which shows you where your photos have been taken. And as the images get processed, you'll even get a color coded update on your model that tells you where you have enough coverage or where you need to shoot more photos. For the 3D scanning veterans out there, this won't be particularly helpful for you, but for beginners, it is a godsend and will definitely help you get a better understanding of how photogrammetry works and how to get better results. Keep taking photos around your subject until you have shot all of the angles you need. Again, refer to the color-coded overlay here. You can toggle both the image overlay and the quality overlay if needed. And in fact, I actually do recommend that you disable the overlay sometimes to ensure that you're getting a good exposure. The exposure of your phone isn't locked and I wish we had the ability to lock the exposure and white balance, but for now it may shift and change a lot. So the overlay being active may prevent you from seeing that your image is poorly exposed or not. So be sure to keep an eye on that. If you notice that your photo is going to be like completely blown out like this, you're gonna to wanna to move your phone around until the camera figures out a better exposure. Reality Scan has a limit of 250 photos you can shoot per scan, so you'll have to make every photo count. The more, the better, usually. It's worth noting that Reality Scan works best on a fast Wi-Fi or data setup as the processing doesn't run locally on your phone. If you notice that your overlay gets misaligned like this, don't worry. This usually only occurs if you put your phone down or move your phone a whole bunch in the other direction. It is a known issue since Reality Scan uses ARKit for this feature. And as annoying as it is when it happens, don't worry. You can keep taking your photos of your subject as usual and it will not affect the scan results. When you're done, you can continue to the next step. Here, you can get a preview of the point cloud the preview mesh, and you can also adjust the crop settings to filter out any parts of your scan that you may or may not want. When you're happy, you can then send it off for processing to the cloud. You'll get a progress bar showing you how much longer you need to wait, and usually it took less than an hour to process. When your models have been processed, you'll find them in your Sketchfab account, ready for download, and I was pretty impressed with the result. For a scan coming from a phone, this turned out way better than I expected. I can now download it, and pop it into Unreal Engine 5, and it looks pretty awesome. With Reality Scan, you get the textures for free with the model, both the albedo base color map and the normal map as well, which is going to be very handy for reasons you're going to see soon. But because the sculpture here is clay, I don't really need the color and texture info from the scan. I'll be making a clay material for it in Unreal since, you know, he's, he's covered in white fluff. But I wanted to preserve the base plate. I wanted to keep the wood texture and use that texture provided by Reality Scan. However, since it was covered in white scanning spray, I needed to do a second scan. We've had one, yes. What about second breakfast? 
one without any scanning spray. Wood will scan well because there are lots of feature points for Reality Scan to pick up, and I was more than confident that the scan would turn out good without the spray. After scanning, processing, and downloading that base plate, using ZBrush, I separated the sculpture from the base. So I now have two models to bring into Unreal, the wooden base plate and actual clay sculpture as two separate entities. I'm doing this because it gives me more control in getting a better render of the clay part in Unreal. Why? Because A, I don't want the lighting baked into my textures because it makes lighting in Unreal very difficult. The seeing here, it just looks plain wrong. And B, well, the sculpture looks like it fell into a bucket of snow. I want my render to look like this brown clay. This is much more convincing. However, we're not done yet. Let's take a look at the scan result. On the left is the model with the texture provided by Reality Scan, and on the right is my clay material in Unreal. You'll notice there is so much detail in the texture that I am just not getting in the clay model. Things like wrinkles, cloth detail, and that's totally normal because photogrammetry textures always look so good because they're sourced from real photos. So how can I transfer that detail to my clay version? By using Substance Painter and an old reliable tool called the High Pass Filter. This effectively isolates the high frequency detail of a texture, which it can then transfer to the height map, which will get baked into the normal map on export. Just take a look here. By adjusting the High Pass Filter and tweaking the height values, I can control the intensity of that filter. With this old school trick, I managed to squeeze out a ton of extra detail in those wrinkles, especially in the face. It is a day and night comparison. And now the last thing there is to do is to place this guy in a pretty environment and render it out. Starting off with the HDRI backdrop for the lighting and turning on the path tracer for maximum quality, I wanted to go for a more of a workshop vibe because it suits the nature of the sculpture. So I took a page from my previous path tracer tutorial here, and I created a workshop table by placing a plane with a mega scan texture and displacing that with Unreal modeling tools. You can do this completely in engine. The HDRI backdrop does so much of the work for us. And uh, since this is a miniature, most of the scene will be blurred out from the shallow depth of field anyway. So these are extremely forgiving shots. Seriously, it took me like 15 minutes to put this scene together. Lastly, you can simply add some additional final touches, scattering a bunch of Megascans assets like various workshop tools, these hammers, and using the foliage tool to paint some wood chips and debris all over the wooden planks. Just a little something to add those extra gritty details. And once the cameras have been placed, all that's left to do is to render the shots. If you want to learn about my render settings in Unreal, I have a free render settings guide you can download on Gumroad, link down below. And for the record, it has been updated for Unreal Engine 5.3. And now, with all of that done, it's time to show you the final results. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you found this video helpful. A big thank you to Capturing Reality for sponsoring this video. And as always folks, happy rendering.